Um, I got the chance to meet David Weiss, a 22-year-old student at Georgetown University, uh, about a week ago. David's story, unfortunately, though it may sound exceptional, is not. He was uh, just about to celebrate his 19th birthday, two days before it in 2010, when he was diagnosed with thyroid and lymphatic cancer, a devastating diagnosis that came just as he was preparing to start college. And as most of his classmates were enjoying the first days of their freshman year at Georgetown University, David was dealing with a rigorous course of treatment for his disease that left him tired, left him confused, and left him anxious about his future. Now, David had an ace up his sleeve, and that was the fact that he had insurance. But he only has it so long as he's covered as a student. And he came to the United States Capitol last week to testify in favor and in support of the Affordable Care Act, because he knows that with the passage of this bill, his diagnosis will not be a death sentence, that he will be able to get the coverage that he needs, and that he will be able to pursue his dreams when he graduates, rather than have his life decisions dictated by his illness, having to choose a job simply because it provides health care, or having to be locked in a career simply because he can't afford going without cancer, going without insurance to cover his cancer. David's story can be repeated hundreds of thousands of times all across this country. Young people in their teens and their 20s and their 30s who thought they were invincible, who got knocked down off their feet by a devastating disease like cancer, and who desperately need health care insurance at the time of that illness in order to stay and get back up onto their feet. And so some of the best news that has come over the past several months as the enrollment has started to ramp up on the Affordable Care Act has been the number of young people that have signed up. We've seen 31% of all of the people who have signed up for uh, insurance exchanges all across this country be 34 years or under. And there is a real signal that young people are recognizing that though they may feel like they are going to live forever, that they desperately need insurance just like everyone else. And so, Mr. President, that's why I was so glad to see President Obama yesterday go on the show Two Ferns with Zach Galifianakis to talk about the importance of young people signing up. Now, we all know about the Two Ferns effect Previously unknown stars like Will Ferrell and Bradley Cooper went on two ferns and were catapulted to stardom. And I'm glad to see that the two ferns effect has had the same impact on healthcare enrollment. Now, since President Obama went on two ferns, 19,000 people were referred to the website of enrollment from the Funnier to Die website, by 6 p.m. that day, the video had sent directly 32,000 people to healthcare.gov. HHS officials said that uh, traffic on healthcare.gov had, had risen by 40% on Tuesday to over 890,000 visits on that one day. Uh, it's a signal that when young people through whatever means is available to them, find out about the benefits of the Affordable Care Act, they're interested and they're signing up. I, I frankly hope that President Obama uses more innovative tools and methods uh, to try to get the word out to young adults in their late teens and 20s and 30s about the importance of signing up for the Affordable Care Act, um, because it's important. 70,000 adolescents and young adults are diagnosed with cancer every single year in this country. There's 151,000 people below the age of 20 living with diabetes right now. And so despite the fact that you may think you're going to live forever, that you think you may not need coverage, young people need it as well. And it's affordable. You know, the president said yesterday on this show that you effectively can get coverage for the cost of a cell phone bill, and it's true. Now, having a cell phone is pretty important, but being 
able to get treatment when you get a serious disease. Well, that's pretty important as well. And so in Connecticut, the numbers are pretty reasonable. If you're a 22-year-old in Hartford making a $25,000 salary, which is the salary that I made in my first job in Hartford, you can get a bronze policy for as low as $66 a month through Anthem. If you're a 25-year-old living in Bridgeport making a little bit more, $30,000, you can get a bronze policy for as low as $108 a month. About two-thirds of all young adults across the country um, who are currently uninsured um, are eligible for these subsidies. And so for all of these young people who were previously going into the marketplace and having to pay full price, often buying insurance on their own with no ability to negotiate a group discount, this health care law is transformational. Fifty or sixty dollars a month is the price for bronze plans, and that doesn't even count the catastrophic option that is open to most young people uh, as well. The good news continues to roll in when it comes to the numbers of people signing up. Yesterday, the administration announced that 4.2 million people have enrolled in marketplaces through March 1st. 943,000 people enrolled in the short month of February. As I said, 31% of all of those people are 34 or under. And of course, we haven't even gotten to crunch time yet. I wish this weren't the case, but I know something about how young people think, and too many of them leave the big decisions until the last minute, whether it be studying for a test or writing a term paper or signing up for health care. And so as we've seen in the past on a lot of these enrollment deadlines, like the enrollment deadline for Medicare Part D, the surge comes in the final few weeks of enrollment. And so we expect to see the numbers pick up in a significant way through March. And I would expect, knowing uh, how people in their 20s and 30s think, that you will see a major surge in enrollment from young people as well. But they shouldn't wait until the last minute. It does take more than a few hours to look at your choices and decide what's best for you. In Connecticut, we have three insurance plans that are offering coverage, but each one of them has three or four different plans. And so I would hope that uh, young adults in their 20s and 30s take more than uh, a few hours or a day to sign up because we want to make sure that you get the plan that's available for you. But it's easy to do. It's easy to do with a phone call to an enrollment center, a visit in Connecticut to the in-person uh, centers in New Britain and in uh, New Haven, and very simple to do on healthcare.gov. Uh, in Connecticut, our exchange is going like gangbusters. We had a goal of signing up about 80 to 100,000 people, and a full 30 days before the deadline, we've signed up 152,000 people. And about 25% in Connecticut of those individuals are 25 years uh, or under. We're on track to double our original estimates in Connecticut. And Connecticut was a state that had a pretty high rate of insured to begin with. So uh, our delta to get to, full, uh, uh, to get to full insurance was relatively small compared to other states. But guess what Connecticut is doing? Connecticut is actually working to implement the law rather than working to undermine the law. We put a lot of time and thought into getting a working website, into doing the kind of outreach that other states are not doing to try to get people to sign up. And when we've done that, young people, old people, across the board have flocked to sign up. Uh, I was glad to see the president do the, uh, his outreach yesterday to young people all across the country. I was glad to see the spike in interest on healthcare.gov. I'm glad to see that 4.2 million people uh, have signed up for uh, healthcare uh, as more people all across the country, young people especially, are realizing that the Affordable Care Act works. I yield back.